Texas and Contemporary Black Voices, where we are talking with Dr. Kim Johnson about black male and women relationships. Dr. Johnson, you were talking about interracial relationships earlier. Can you continue your 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 comments? Uh, yeah, so basically was, uh, I think the question was talking about, for example, interrelation, uh, interracial relationships, uh, different religious backgrounds. And I was basically saying that, yes, in other cultures, you don't see that as much, especially if there is a different religion, people generally stay within that religious background. And I don't necessarily know if that is because that is their preference as it, as, as it is in comparison to in some cultures going against the family or the norm or being more independent per se is not viewed as strongly as it is here in our culture. Okay, so I'm going to be the disruptor in this discussion because okay. what I wanted to know was to, uh, looking at statistics, are there more black, non-black, interracial relationships in relation to others? And interestingly enough, black, non-black relationships mm -hmm. are at about 11%. So. So who are the dominant factors in what we call interracial relationships? Now, segue to the side. Uh, when we usually talk about interracial relationships, we think about in terms of black and white. We don't mm -hmm. think about in terms of white, Hispanic, white, Asian, where collectively they have a higher percentage of interracial relationships than black, non-black people. So. Uh, I'm thinking it's a matter of aesthetics. If I was to walk down the street with a white man, you would immediately see the interracial relationship there based on the color of my skin. And yes, you people who are going to make the comments, we're going to make it about race. But you don't <laughs> usually see that when you're looking at a Hispanic and white or white Asian as much again as the uh, uh, black, white, black, non black combinations. So you teach marketing, I teach marketing. And I think, I think Chris asked a question earlier is the intent there to disrupt the traditional black family, black relationship, black marriage uh, phenomenon? Okay, excellent question. So uh, first you, you brought up the interracial relationships and you're, you're very correct in terms of, I think when you have an interracial relationship mm -hmm. and you have, for example, someone black mm -hmm. and someone white, that's more obvious, but there are others and I've seen them. And as you were talking, some came to mind of white with Hispanic, white with uh, other others from other European countries. So I've seen that as well. And so you do have those dynamics, but they're not as noticeable. A lot of times you won't even know that there is a difference unless someone tells you that they're from a different background or maybe you can pick up on, um, you could hear it when they're speaking. And some of that may be due to, even though uh, they're more, assimilated together in the places and, and activities and things that they do. And so they interact more. As it relates to, we were talking about commercials other, uh, earlier, and is it trying to maybe having these images, is that a, a way to maybe take away, for example, from the Black family or Black relationships or the importance of it? I honestly believe, and this is, like I said, might be my my personal opinion. I think it's all about, for as it relates to commercials and things, I think that's business. I really think that is, is, is business. Businesses are going to do things that work out for their favor, that work out for their bottom line, that are going to appease the customers that, that they feel that they need to appease, 
that will minimize the criticism. So as it relates to commercials, I think that's business because we've also, we've also seen businesses that do things and we're like, uh, they're just trying to appease. Is okay. it really genuine? So that's my, my personal opinion as it relates to the commercials. I think it's, if you want to call it good business sense, but I, I think that's, I think that's business more so than a genuine effort to, do, to create issues. Okay, great. I mean, Caleb. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I kind of, uh, in prepara preparation for this segment, I kind of went into some of those groups and, uh -huh. uh, and, and looked around and did some exploring and stuff. And I was, uh, I was shocked to see uh, a lot of the comments that were, that were in there uh, that were pointed towards black women. And uh, it was—I mean, it was just—it was mind-boggling. It, it really was, uh, and it—it it, it was disturbing uh, the thought process of some of these people. And so, mm -hmm. um, and this is more of a, a just a, a comment, and I want everybody to you know everybody chime in on. But um, what I, some of the things that I saw is one, they talked about uh, the, some of the standards that that uh, this Kevin Samuels had set, talking about they want their women fit and feminine and submissive. And so this idea that I, I want to talk about is submit, huh? the submissive part of it, like that's, that's uh, psychologically submission is something that's done out of fear. And so, and, and, and the idea that these, 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 these men, uh, I, which I think it speaks a lot toward to them personally, that they are even looking for us. What is a submissive black woman? I don't even know. Doesn't that, exist. I don't even know what that is. You know, doesn't, what I mean? doesn't exist. So, so is that why they go for the white girl? That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what they're, one of the things they were talking about. They want submission, and they want you know they had this this enormous list, and so I'm, I mean that's it was just like I say it's 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 um, something that was very disconcerting to see that, and so if that's reflective of the state. Of, uh, of of black relationships, then um, and I hope it's not. But if it is, we're we're in, we're in trouble. Well, that's just a small mm. portion, isn't it? Uh, hopefully, that's just mm -hmm. a small portion. I hope. <laughs> well, those black because... women like Dr. Sharon. They just won't act right. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, 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 these guys. Uh, I, this is on a uh, some kind of. Mm -hmm. Social media, the black yeah, man is spirit. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's you know that's stupid. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna call it like it is. Yeah, and you can go on our site and correct or mm -hmm. criticize me if you want. But if you sit out there criticizing black women, saying you want certain size and everything else, uh, who are you? Mm -hmm. What do you have to offer? You know, you 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 just you're disgusting. You sound like you Kevin Samuels. Say, no, I don't. No, I don't. You need to take that back. No, you need to take that back. But I don't sound like Kevin Samuels. No. No, don't you ever put me in that category. But no, 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 that's not what Kevin Samuels does. That's not what he does, okay? He attacks our black women. And I don't ever want to be a, uh, compared to anybody who does that. I'm, I'm proudly married to a black woman. Sure. Okay? And... Uh, none of this applies to our marriage mm -hmm. and how I look at black women. So please don't ever, ever uh, uh, compare me mm -hmm. to that idiot. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's go to a different topic so you guys can calm down. <laughs> so uh, I saw some data. Mm -hmm. from the Census Digest that was publicized in 2022, but the data came back in, uh, came out in the 2018. And they looked at the divorce rate by ethnicity. Unfortunately, we topped the charts at 30.8%, almost wow. doubling other groups. So, for you legal eagles out there, has the no fault proceedings become an ominous factor in making it easier to just walk away? Are you talking about like a disillusion or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, they have these no, no fault, fault, no fault mm -hmm. divorces. Sure. Where you can just walk away. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that all over the country? All over the country. Called by different names, but yes, the same thing. So is that? I mean, again, is that something that's generational? Because it has, it has to be. Because I mean, it's like I think a lot of these people, a lot of these young folks these days, are confusing marriage with dating. 
And so if you're dating, you can walk away. But if you're married, then, you know, one of the things that, and I'm not an expert, and so I, I, I've been married to the same woman for about 31 years. And so uh, one of the things you do is you take leaving out of the equation. That's not even a part of our thought process. You know what I mean? And, and right. we, we may have done it incorrect, but it works for us. What do you and mean so incorrect? We, Why would you I'm say that? The way we handle our situation is she says what she got to say. I say what we I got to say. And that's it. You well, know there, what I mean? There, so, there's nothing incorrect about <laughs> well, that. I'm just, I'm just saying the way okay. we did it, yeah. we going to speak our peace. But after that, we're going to keep on doing We're going to keep on checking because we got babies to raise. And so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it, it, we may this idea of you're not going to go to bed upset. We go to bed upset. Let me say this. Okay. Yeah. Anyone who wants a passive mm -hmm. woman mm -hmm. is insecure. Exactly. Is insecure. He's not a man. Exactly. Okay. Because a man would want his, his wife or his woman to be his equal in exactly. everything, challenge him when yes. he thinks he's wrong, as long as he can do the same with her. Yes. But to have a passive man, who wants a passive woman? No, I think no. deep down inside, there's a lot of men who want that. They're and, obviously, and, and, and obviously, yeah. based on what you've seen mm -hmm. on those chat yeah. threads, they are saying that. Well, they're insecure men. It doesn't they make are. a difference. No, it does. It does. What's happening in this country is is the black woman mm -hmm. is uh, out <laughs> performing the black man in education. Okay. In education. They're outperforming. Uh. I think more black women are graduating mm -hmm. than almost any other gender or race. Mm -hmm. And that's creating, I believe, insecurities. Right. And these guys got on this stupid uh, mm -hmm. web, whatever it is and criticize them. Mm -hmm. They got to go overseas uh, yeah. to, to find to find a woman. Of, uh, yeah, from a different culture. A different so, culture. So, Kim, you want to say something? What do you, what do you yeah. tell your sons? What I tell my sons? Oh, wow. Okay, can I say something before I tell what I tell my sons? It makes, <laughs> yeah. When you talk about that no-fault divorce, and I was looking into it, one of the things I've seen, my husband and I working with couples, is have people done the work to realize or recognize what issues you have and what do we need to do to work on it? So no fault divorce, just saying we just, we just can't come to an agreement. We just don't get along. I don't think people understand that marriage is work. We work at everything else. We work at our jobs, careers, mm -hmm. we work on our health, but we think, and maybe it's part of, you know, when we were younger, you know, the, the fairy tale, you're supposed to fall in love and love, just conquers all. And I'm not saying it doesn't, but you have to put in the work. Have you? And one of the things in our community is we don't do a good job of seeking help when we need help. And there's nothing wrong with if you're running into problems, finding someone quality to sit down and talk to. So when I see the no fault, it makes me wonder has the work gone in or have we talked about the details of have we just let things build up to the point that you just don't know what the problem is anymore? And it's, it's work. And I, and I believe, and I, please excuse me if I don't get the names right. I think it was Mr. Alexander basically said that, you know, we take it off the table that walking out is that's off the table. So that means we need to come to the table and we need to talk this thing through. We need to figure it out. You know, what is our bigger goal, but what do I tell my boys? Um, one of the things I try to model, my husband and I try to model to our kids about marriage and life that, you know, it, it does take work, but it, it takes effort. And when I talk to them about young ladies, and I only have one that's at the at the point of, you know, he's about to graduate from high school. The other ones are, are much younger. But I, I talk to him about, you know, you treat somebody the way you want to be treated. You, 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 you. You, your friend, who you're talking to, they should be your friend. You should want the best for her, just like you want for yourself. That it's a, it's a partnership that you know how to talk and you know how to communicate and that you're considerate. Um, all of those things and that you, you shouldn't want to drip somebody dry. That's not the best word, but you shouldn't want to be, you shouldn't just want to pull from somebody. And sometimes when you read those comments, and I've read the comments online, and they're scary. And you're hoping, just like a, a Dr. Uh, Michael Chad, well, we're both professors, and usually students that fill out evaluations, I always say they really, really liked you, 
or they hated your guts. The in-between never make comments. And so you always hope with those comments online that it's the far extremes, but they're scary. If that's the notion of how people really feel, that that's what they really think relationships should be about. Okay. And with that, we're going to go ahead and say thank you, Dr. Johnson, for being on air with us. And we're going to segue over to hot topics. And what are we going to talk about, Fred? Are you a hero if you kill a black person? All righty then. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And tell thank George you. I said, hey. I will. Take care. Bye-bye.